Bonjour! It's about time we talked about France. It's a country known for its rich history and culture, but today we're not going to be talking about the restaurants, the museums, and the buildings. We're going to be talking about the dark stories that have haunted the people of France for hundreds, perhaps even thousands of years. Will they end up haunting you too? Let's find out. My name is Danny Burke, and this is the Top 10 Scary French Urban Legends. Alright, just before we get into this, I want to talk to you guys about Quid. We spoke about it in a previous video, so some of you guys might remember that it's a great app for collecting stickers, gifts, cards, and 3D figures for free on your phone. Think of it like Bitmoji, but better. It's got your favorite TV shows like Game of Thrones, Rick and Morty, Adventure Time, and your favorite games like Five Nights at Freddy's and Fallout. They've also got some really popular new additions, including Transformers and My Little Pony. You name it, it's all there. They have everything. I tried to see if they didn't have a show that I liked. I failed. You can drag and drop these stickers and gifts into iMessage, and if your friend has one you like, but you don't have, you can trade them instantly to collect the rarest ones. The best news is there are new releases every single day. Even today, there's new stickers and gifts that you couldn't get until now. Our custom link for you guys is in the description box below. They'll see you're a most amazing top 10 fan, they'll be happy, you'll be happy, and we'll be happy. Go and click it to get quid today, it helps support our show and we really appreciate it. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Lou. Castle. This urban legend originates from the Gassoni region of France. The Lou Castle is said to be a disgusting, grotesque creature that wanders the countryside of southern France. It's described as half snake, half snail. Its massive and long body carries an enormous shell on its back. Its hideous mouth is surrounded by several long, hairy, and slime covered tentacles that can extend for not inches or feet, but for miles. Yes, you heard me right, miles. They send these tentacles stretching out from the caves they live in. They wait for people to accidentally touch one and then bang. They grab hold of you and drag you right down underground where they swallow you whole with their huge mouths. Next up at number 9 now we have meat pies. In the 15th century the story goes that a barber and a cook made a deal in Paris. The barber would slit the throats of his clients who were mainly poor college students. He would then chop up their bodies and send them through a trapdoor to a cook straight to his kitchen. The cook would then use the human meat to make his pies and sell them to the public. There were many different flavors and sizes to reflect the diversity of his supply. Business grew for both of them and the bakery became known as one of the city's most well-known patisseries. Nobody was wise to what was going on, at least no human. You see one day a German student called Alaric was visiting the barber. His dog sensed that something wasn't right and began barking at the neighbors. When people came to investigate, they found the cellar full of torture tools used to hack apart the corpses. The two men confessed to their heinous crimes and were burnt alive in iron cages. Moving on to number 8 now, we have the Paluda. This creature has been a feared part of French folklore for generations. Its name means hairy or shaggy beast, but to be honest, it's a whole lot more than that. They are said to have stingers like a porcupine, the head and neck of a snake, tortoise feet, and a serpent tail. Their breath withers crops. They can fire their quills like arrows, spit acid out of their tails, and if they attack you, you're doomed. They are said to be invulnerable all over their body except for their tail. With their huge size, people say they could create floods simply by stepping on rivers. Some people believe that the Paluda was one of the animals that was not saved by Noah and his ark in the Bible. However, it still managed to survive the great flood by hiding in caves. Afterwards, it went on a rampage across the world, killing everything that got to board the ark instead. Some people say it still continues this today, even if they're only left in France. Next up at number 7 now, we have the Chateau de Tresse. This is a medieval castle in the Brittany region of France. From the outside, it's an impressive looking building, attracting tourists from all over the world. But don't be fooled by its outward charm. The chateau is famous for its terrifying ghost stories. One night, many years ago, a black coat stopped near the moat and two men got out. They used shovels and picks to dig a deep grave in silence. From the coach, they dragged a young woman dressed as a bride, her face as pale as her dress. She didn't cry or beg for mercy as her execution laid her in her grave and covered her with dirt. The men then rode off into the darkness. A local man saw the whole thing from the trees and gathered the other villagers to help. They dug her up and tried to save her 
but by sunrise she had died without ever saying a word. They never knew who she was or why those men killed her, but it wasn't the last time people saw her. In a century since then, locals have sworn they see her ghost floating on the waters of the moat near where she died, still in her wedding dress and still deathly silent. Next up at number 6 now we have the catacombs. This is perhaps one of the most famous and creepy parts of Paris. They are a series of tunnels that wind underneath the city. They are said to hold the remains of some 6 million people there. They were first started in the late 18th century to help deal with the city's overflowing cemeteries. A sign at the entrance reads stop. This is the empire of the dead. 800 meters of the walkways are just lined entirely with bones. Over the years locals have shared many stories of dark goings on there among the bones. Legends of Masonic cult meetings, black masses, Nazi gatherings, gang fights and serial killers. Coming at number 5 now we have the wooden leg. In the Chateau de Combourgie there is a ghost with a wooden leg. It's said to be the ghost of Comte de Combourg. He was a general who lived there 300 years ago and lost his leg in battle, having it replaced by a wooden one. In life, his leg was said to send echoes around the castle so that everyone knew where he was. After he died though, that never went away. In the years since, many visitors have said they've heard his leg thumping around the castle in the night. Some even say they've seen it walking up and down the stairs by itself no body attached to it, accompanied only by a mysterious black cat. Moving on to number 4 now we have a strange concert. On June 2nd 1925 a 24 year old medical student named John Romier was studying in a garden in Paris. An elderly man approached him dressed in a strange riding coat. The two men began to talk about classical music and eventually the old man invited John to come and listen to his concert that he was putting on with some friends on Friday. John accepted and asked for his name and address. His name was Alphonse. Fonzi Barriere and he gave him his address, third floor on the left. Next Friday, John arrived at the given address and was welcomed in where he met Alphonse's whole family. They were lovely to him, but John couldn't quite shake the strange feeling that something wasn't right. Maybe it was the old fashioned apartment with its outdated decor and gas lighting. The musicians sat down and performed some classical music including Mozart. John stayed for a few hours after and talked to Alphonse about music. He thanked him and then he left. Out in the street he realized he had left his lighter inside. He went up and rang the bell, but there was no answer. He kept trying until a neighbor came out and asked what the problem was. John said he was trying to see Alphonse, but the neighbor said, I think you're mistaken. Alphonse has been dead for 20 years and that apartment has been empty since then. John told him that this was impossible. He had just spent a whole night with him and his family. The neighbor started to become suspicious of John and accused him of being a thief. The police unlocked the apartment and took John inside along with the owner of the place. It was actually Alphonse's great 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 grandson. They walked through the apartment which was now empty. When they got to the back room they found a side table covered in dust. There sitting on top was John. John's lighter. Some say that Jean experienced a real life time slip. Others refuse to believe this happened at all. Either way, there's an official police report out there that contains this whole story, and many people believe it's still unsolved. At number 3 now we have the Tuileri Phantom. This is another story involving a man called Jean. He worked as a butcher near the Tuileri Palace in Paris during the reign of Catherine de Medici in the 16th century. She ordered Jean to be killed because he had threatened to reveal many of the royal family's secrets. Secrets. Just before he was executed, he told his executioner that he would rise from the dead. The executioner left Jean's corpse in the garden. He then went to tell Catherine the deed had been done. When he returned to the garden to dispose of the body, he found Jean's corpse missing. A few days later, the Queen's astrologist reported having a vision. In it, he claimed he saw all of the inhabitants of the palace die a horrible death and that Jean would haunt the palace until it was destroyed. Not long after that, the executioner was on his way to the palace when he looked behind him and froze in horror. There stood Jean, drenched in blood as if he was still alive. Thus beginning the legend of the red man. He is said to have haunted the grounds ever since. People believe that if you come across Jean, the little red man, that means a terrible tragedy will follow shortly. Next up at number 2 now we have the Devil's Door of Notre Dame. Notre Dame is a very famous cathedral in Paris. Many visitors notice its elegant side doors with their intricate iron patterns. They were designed by an artist called Biscornet. His 
talents were known throughout France, the doors were considered a masterpiece, taking months to complete in Biscornet's workshop. Parisians were so impressed that some of them began to doubt that he did it alone. This was the 1300s, an age of deep superstition in Europe. Some people believed that Biscornet had sold his soul to the devil in exchange for this masterpiece. Locals said they had been to his studio during his work hours, where they had found him unconscious on the floor next to the finished piece, which had been mysteriously completed in record time. When they came to first use the door on the cathedral, the priest claimed that they could only get it to work after sprinkling it with holy water. Biscornet died soon after, and in the years since, many experts have struggled to explain how exactly he made this with the basic tools of his time. Some people also point to his name. B means two or twice, while Cornet means horn. Put it together, and you have the two horned man. And finally, at number one, now we have the Chateau de Brissac. This old French castle in the Loire Valley was first built in the 11th century. It's been almost a thousand years since then, and its walls have seen some grisly deaths and hauntings. Perhaps the most famous is the story of Charlotte. She was the wife of Jacques de Brézé, the lord of the castle in the 1400s. One night he came home after a hunt and had dinner with Charlotte. Then they went to bed in their separate rooms. The marriage was said to be for political reasons, not love. That night he was woken by his servant who said Charlotte had another man in his room. And and it was one of his hunting partners. He flew into a rage, grabbed his sword, and attacked both of them, slashing and hacking away. By the time they were dead, their bodies had almost 100 wounds inflicted. Charlotte was actually the half sister of King Louis VI. He stripped Jacques of all of his titles and took possession of his castle. As for Charlotte, well, people say she never left. Her traumatic death made her a ghost, cursed to haunt the castle forever. They say at night, on the walls of the castle, you can see a female ghost in a great green dress with bloody, gaping holes all over her body. She is silent, except for when she returns to the room where she was murdered, where deathly moans and cries can be heard until dawn. Okay. That was a long one, I'll admit it. Hopefully that's going to satisfy your scary story needs for at least the next day or two. But then, what do you want to see next? We've already done a few part twos to your favourites. We can keep doing that, or we can keep exploring whole new countries and their scary stories. Let me know. Once again, thank you to Quid for sponsoring this video. You can find the link to download their app in the description box below. My name is Danny Burt. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video.